Well, you've caught up with one of the candidates uh, vying for the first district congressional seat in Kansas, the Republican uh, ticket, uh, Alan Law Police. Who, uh, uh, Alan, uh, you've been at this uh, campaign now for a little bit. Uh, we have a few days uh, left to election. Uh, tell us how things are going. Uh, they're going great. I'm, I'm really pleased with the. Um with where I'm at, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of road to cover. It's a big district. I got to meet with a lot of people, and uh, I think if I just get the word out, if I get everyone to realize that there is an election in in August, and that there is a good qualified Republican who's going to go to Washington and do his job, if I can get that information out there, uh, I think that it'll be a good turnout, and I'll uh, I'll win the vote. You're primarying an incumbent. It's got to be kind of a bigger challenge. Of course, it's a huge challenge. Uh, he's got the advantage. He's got the network. He's got the money. He's already got his voters that are just in there. But I'm going against an incumbent who's got a voting record. Now, I've got a bio. I've got a, a, a life story. My life story is uh, agricultural roots. My life story is serving in the military uh, in the first Gulf War. My life story is dedicating most of my adult life to education. He's got a voting record. Now, I'd put my life story up against his voting record any day on ag, He's never supported the ag bill, the farm bill. He's he's he gotten he's gotten thrown off the ag committee. Uh, he doesn't support our industry, our number one vital industry. He doesn't support renewable fuels and renewable fuels, especially with ethanol, ties directly into ag. He's got to defend that record, and I will I'll I'll, I'll defend it right now. And uh, jobs, he he's got to he's got to come to the table and explain to the voters of Kansas that he's promoted domestic jobs, the creation of good domestic jobs with policy. Now he can blame people all he wants, but his voting record demonstrates that he votes no on anything that's going to be productive for our district, anything that's going to be productive for the things that make sense to us. All right, so let's talk about uh, some of your solutions with your life story. I know you've uh, spent a lot of time in education as well, so you, you bring all those things to the table. So let's talk about, uh, about your platform of, uh, of what you want to see happen if you're elected. Well, you mentioned education. I, I support education. Uh, I don't like the top-down approach, so I'm going to Washington, like Tim, I guess, to, to take away the, 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 the top-level control, especially when it comes to education. Now, I will go there. I will propose education bills. Uh, I think that we need to fund education at the state and local level, but there's support at the federal level that needs to be there. We have a nutrition program that feeds kids. I want to continue that, but I, don't, I want to take away all the mandates. I want to say, you know, if a local district wants to serve uh, um, you know, a, 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 a whole wheat roll, they can serve a whole wheat roll. If they want to serve a white, white bread roll, they can serve white bread. The, you shouldn't be directed by the federal government on what to put in those menus. Uh, the same thing with curriculum. If the teacher has gone through this training and they've become very good at what they do, the federal government shouldn't tell them how to teach. So at the federal level, I want to disseminate that power. I want to, I want to put it back down to the state and the local school boards so they can improve our education system. Um, the next thing in my life is I'm a veteran, and the VA is right now in a crisis point. Our VA is not serving its veterans the way it should. Tim's record demonstrates that he's been on that committee for three and a half years. The website, the House VA committee website, demonstrates knowledge over a year ago of these wait lists, and now it's all scandal. They demonstrate deaths. Uh, six months ago, the, the, the website, it said there were kerfuffles in the distribution of health care in the VA. Six months ago, we weren't in an election cycle, and they called them kerfuffles. Now it's a full-blown crisis. We need to fix our VA immediately. I've got a couple of solutions that I've been talking about for months now. Local care, a, a veteran and his family should be able to get local care at their local hospital. I think we should use active duty military, use the resources of our active duty to go in there and, and fix the VA while we're in crisis mode. It, it's like triage. You have to go in there and you fix the problem. You don't undermine it. So I would send in active duty doctors, administrators, nurses, uh, whoever you can get to go in there, support the VA, get it back on its feet. But I would also create a program where you could employ, you could enlist uh, or recruit doctors and administrators and nurses make them active duty, make them officers, and then for as many years that they train, then they've got to give that many years back to the VA. We can strengthen our VA and we can fulfill our promise to our veterans. But we don't do that by undermining the VA, by attacking the, the leadership. The, the one bill that Tim put out was a, a bill, the only thing that he's gotten even past the House, was a bill that requires the administrators to document all their overseas travel. Now I didn't realize that that was the reason why veterans were dying. But that's the only bill that Tim's proposed. It's one single bill that says, Let's, let's see documentation of all your foreign travel. How about we pass a bill that guarantees that our veterans get covered when they need it? 
How about we pass a bill that, that tries to solve the problem, that addresses the issues and tries to get out a solution, rather than just attack leadership? Because that's what Tim does. He just attacks leadership, and there's never a solution when you do that. Uh, other things like the economy, we need to promote good domestic private sector jobs. Tim can say he does that, he passes these bills, but he votes no on most of them. And yeah, they languish on Harry Reid's desk, but you can't keep shifting the blame. Take some responsibility, pass some good jobs bills that you can get through. A big part of that is collaborate with fellow Republicans. You have to work with your Republicans to get a bill that you can send across the table that gets passed. Now, in three months, the Senate's going to change. It's going to be a Republican-led Senate, and if we're not prepared for that change, if we're not working within our own party to promote good jobs bills and to promote party unity, we're still going to be defeating ourselves because we'll have a Republican-led Senate, but we'll be infighting, and then for the next two years, we'll accomplish nothing. Our Congress will be just a bunch of dysfunctional, do-nothing members of, of, of the Republican Party. And in 2016, when we run a Republican candidate for the presidency, America will remember, you guys are the party that did nothing. You guys are the party that couldn't get along and accomplish the goals of the Republican Party. We're not going to reward you with the executive. We're not going to give you a president. We're going to give that back to a Democrat. If we don't start working together, we will all guarantee our own demise. Well, if they want to get more information, Alan, on your campaign, how to get a hold of you or uh, find out more, how can they do that? Uh, we've got a website. You can go to true-conservative.com. Uh, you can also go to alanlawpolice.com. There's a, a campaign uh, a phone number you can call, and that's 785-818-4225, and someone will pick up. And you can almost always access me, and I'll answer specific questions. And go to your, uh, your, your district polling place. Go to your county uh, uh, elections board. Go to register. You can still register up until the 15th, which is next week, and vote. Early voting starts on the 16th. You could actually cast a ballot on the 17th of July. But make sure that you go to the poll, if you haven't already done it, on August the 5th. Bring friends, bring family, bring your neighbors. Get people, throw them in the car and say, this election means something. It's the most important election that we've ever had. If you want to continue to have somebody that goes in there and, 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 and dismantles the Republican Party and government in general, he can go back and do that. But I guarantee you there will be, there will be a, a, a results of that. We will pay if we can't start accomplishing the goals of the American people and specifically the goals of the Republican Party. All right, Alan, thanks a lot. Thanks, Ken. Alan Law Police, a candidate for the Republican nomination for the 1st District Congressional seat in Kansas. For Ag View, I'm Ken Rogers.